three great alliances fight to claim it. Evil awakens. A long vanished foe stirs. Those who would destroy Tamriel seek out dangers to their dark plot. And so death's long arm reaches out. It is the 582nd year of the Second Era. The drums of war are sounding. This is where our journey begins. Elsewhere, land of the Khajiit. Here, life should be good. But we suffer a thousand perils. Beneath the tyrannical rule of the Usurper Queen, our farms and villages overrun by hordes of undead. And the very land itself Set afire by a rage of dragons. Heroes emerge, ready to defend elsewhere, wielding weapons, spells, and even necromancy to claim victory at all costs.
It's good to see you, Five Claw. We only just returned and I have yet to report to the Queen. Kamira is all right, isn't she? We saw the moons move and the eclipse end, but we haven't heard what happened after you entered the moon gate. After I was caught in that dragon blast, Zamarak tended to my wounds and took command of the soldiers defending the upper ridge. I'm sorry to say that I was in and out of consciousness for most of what happened next. I know that I am still alive and grateful to be back in Rimen. It's a miracle, thank the moons, that the city is free once more. If you want to know what really occurred at the moon gate, you'll need to ask Zamarak and Prefect Kelo. There are those among the troops who need the healers more than I, but perhaps a few hours in the soothing springs will restore my strength. I'll need it too. I have much to do to help Kamira restore Enequina to its former glory. It's you. Good to see you're still among the living. I suppose you had a hand in getting the moons to finally fall apart? Hang on, I need to finish my report. I find that it's best to write it all down while it's still fresh in my mind. It's all in my report. Our troops held their ground and fought bravely. We lost many good soldiers, Khajidi and Imperial, but we did our duty. We slaughtered Euraxians by the score and kept the dragons at bay until the moons broke apart. It was crucial to our survival. When the moons separated, the dragons broke ranks. They seemed to lose their drive, their purpose. They stopped attacking and flew off. Not a moment too soon. We had exhausted both our strength and our ammunition. The ones that survived Zamorak's charge lost what remained of their courage when the dragons abandoned the field of battle. They scattered like sand roaches and ran in all directions. I doubt they'll give the militia too much trouble going forward. We still have a lot to do to heal the scars left by Euraxia and her mercenaries. I'll offer our services to Queen Kamira and Lord Garashri. Let them use us where we'll do the most good. If that's what they need. But the Cygnus Irregulars are mostly military engineers, scouts, and trainers. We have a lot more to offer a kingdom that needs to be rebuilt than just blades and shields. That was our original mission, to help elsewhere. <sighs> Zamarak is happy to see you, friend. After the dragons entered the moon gate and you followed, this one worried that all was lost. But then, the moons parted, and suddenly everything seemed all right. Just what you would expect. We held our ground against the swarming Euraxians and their necromancers, repelled the dragons as best we could. This one let the desert wind flow through his limbs and claws, while our soldiers rallied to his side. Between the Kajiti militia and the Cygnus Irregulars, we held them off. When the moon separated, the Euraxians broke off their attack and scattered to the four winds. The remainder will be a nuisance, but they pose no threat to the kingdom. Zamarak doesn't know for certain. We faced mostly the Euraxians on the upper ridge. Prefect Kelo commanded the Ballisti, so he could tell you more. This one does know that when the moons began to separate, the dragons roared in rage and flew away. Zamarak hopes to serve as Queen Kamira's claw and defend the throne as he was trained to do. If she will not have me, well, Gareshri has many plans for improving life in elsewhere. This one would be happy to help in any way he can.
Outsider, this one must speak with you. This one never expected to set foot in the capital of Anequina again. She hoped the militia would succeed, but she didn't believe they stood a chance against the usurper queen. Kashia understands you played a significant role in these events, yes? Such wonders you have accomplished, and you have touched the face of Blessed Jode. This one is in awe. Despite all that, the main has sent me to determine what happens next. Where is Lord Gareshri, the Speaker of the Main? The healers? This one hopes the Speaker wasn't gravely injured. As for your question, we must settle the matter of Anequina's succession. Kashia must determine if Kamira is the legitimate heir to the throne, and if so, recognize her claim. Certainly. But anyone can make such a claim. To be accepted by the Kajiti, she must be recognized by the main. With Gareshri indisposed, will you stand with Kamira and vouch for her heritage? If so, please tell her I am ready to meet with her. Before you return to Kamira's side, this one requests an additional favor. The main gave Kashia a sealed letter for Abner Tharn. But he refuses to see me. I understand that you and he share a special bond. Perhaps you could deliver the letter. The specifics concern the Tharn alone. But this one believes it deals with the artificial eclipse and its impact on Kajiti society. The moons hold great sway over the Kajit born under them. What does this mean for those born during this eclipse? No matter what caused the eclipse, Joan and Jod joined as one. When this occurs naturally, one born then may become the next main. But during a false eclipse, succession becomes a concern. The main hopes Tharn can explain the arcane implications. The main cannot be everywhere at once. That is what the speaker and the envoys are for. For now. The Main's duties do not include Anequina, but know that the Main's heart is everywhere in elsewhere. Now, please deliver the letter to Abner Tharn. No, you simply must stay for the ceremony. It's not every day we get to see a lovely cat receive a crown. Nonsense. And don't call me Abner. Besides, I think I've overstayed my welcome as far as Chimera is concerned. You and Cadwell, the two of you just can't leave well enough alone. No one was supposed to notice as I slipped out of Rimen. Of course, very little has gone according to plan since the Wrathstone tablet set me on this path. I am neither sentimental nor enamored of pomp and circumstance. My time in elsewhere has shown me that I have limits. I am not the battle mage I was in my younger days. Besides, I hate parties. Small talk, speeches, canapes, totally unbearable. I watched firsthand as a remarkable young woman became a leader. She's already a queen. Everything else is simply ceremony. I've lingered here long enough. You were an able enough traveling companion. I may call on you again sometime. Hmm. An intriguing question. Are Khajiit born under a forced eclipse next in line for the main? But this other bit confirms my suspicions. I must travel to Pelotine at once. I'm sure we'll see each other again. Until then, farewell. We accomplished much. But I fear we haven't seen the last of Calgrontid. I must investigate reports coming from the south. 
You, however, have a queen to crown. Take Cadwell with you and make sure he behaves. And tell Chimera she did admirably. We saw no body, and there's no reason to suppose Cal Grontide couldn't escape from Joe just as we did. He absorbed a remarkable amount of energy while the moons were aligned after all. I'll send for you if and when I confirm my suspicions. I assure you, Tasia, my wounds are healing quite nicely. Nevertheless, this one has asked the Outlander to stand beside Kamira. Should I decide to give the main blessing? Garishri told me you found them. He filled me in on what happened during the battle at the Moon Gate. Dragons and necromancers, I understand. But politics and coronations, ah, they twist my tail and their regalia. It pinches. Moons, I miss my leathers. I am having many thoughts, but I know what I must do. Like Anequina and my other ancestors before me, I must stand tall and accept my responsibilities with humility and grace. Provided the Main's envoy confirms my right to the throne. The woman is inscrutable! I think she just wants to see me suffer until she acquiesces and places the crown on my head. Before the full weight of the kingdom falls upon my shoulders, I want to tell you something. I want you to know I appreciate everything you have done for elsewhere. For me, I do not believe we would have survived without your assistance. Now, I understand the envoy asked you to stand beside me at the ceremony. Are you ready, my friend? Five claw, they work. Healers were able to do wonders, my friend. I almost feel like my old self again. I will secure Kamira's claim. You just stand beside her and support her. She values your presence, as do I. But where is Kamira? I expected you to bring her in. Who will confirm that Kamira is the daughter of King Hemakar and the rightful heir to the throne of Anequina? I will, as her guardian all these years, and as the speaker of the main, Kamira is the rightful heir. Come forth, daughter of Hemakar and Numara. Come forth, child of Enequina. Kamira, do you accept the duties of the throne? Will you lead this kingdom and protect its people? I do, and I will. Know then that the main accepts and recognizes your claim. 
All hail Chimera, Queen of Anequina! I promise to serve our people, and I offer thanks to all who helped achieve our recent victories. Finally, there is one I wish to honor. One whose assistance in these matters was unprecedented and invaluable. Five Claw, my comrade and friend, please approach the throne. Courageous Five Claw, I will make sure your deeds are sung by my people. They will be told from one generation to the next. As Kunzari passed into legend, so too will you. Then say nothing, my friend. Just know that you helped deliver my homeland from tyranny. You helped me avenge my parents. You saved us from dragons and undead. We will never forget that. I... I will never forget that. You appear from elsewhere needed you most. In our most desperate time of troubles, you helped restore our nation. You will always have a place here, my friend. And I want you to accept the greatest award I can offer. I name you Champion of Anequina. There are still dragons to kill and Euraxians to deal with. But now it is time to celebrate. Take a few moments, talk to our friends, then enjoy yourself, Champion. You earned it. Just what you would expect. I listen to problems and I try to find solutions. I suppose I must coordinate with our allies in the Dominion at some point, and there are still stray dragons and Euraxian deserters to deal with. So, <laughs> the usual things. It is time for different adventures, Five Claw. I must lead my people and erase the memories of the Usurper Queen. May her name be blotted from their histories. Of course, I may find time to slip away and explore a ruin or two. <laughs> Every now and again. And all hail Five Claw! Whom I name Champion of Anequina!